The first friend I made in kindergarten put a baby doll into my hands 10 minutes after I stepped into her house. She's a typical girl, I overheard her mother tell mine. She loves playing with dolls, and she really loves Disney princesses. I found the dolls shifting eyes unsettling. <laughs> I didn't know how to hold it. Didn't know what about me communicated that I would enjoy this activity. But my friend said, this is what girls do. And I was a girl, so I played along. Even though I was always more the sort who special requested the Hot Wheels toy with my Happy Meal at McDonald's. The doll moment kicked off years of half-hearted striving toward white suburban girlhood. My school friends, all girls, often wore elaborate nail polish designs. So I had a nail polish phase. I fished old Bath and Body Works birthday presents from the back of my closet after realizing people sprayed themselves with sugary and floral scents like lavender and vanilla sugar in the gym locker room. In ninth grade English, I carefully watched a friend sitting in front of me put her hair in a bun, fascinated by the magic deftness in her hands movements. But I couldn't get my hands to perform that same deftness when I practiced at home. I tied and retied my hair into buns that always fell out and became messy. As an undergrad, when Operation Grow Up and Make Myself a Woman Like Everybody Else became not just an effort to make and maintain friendships, but an attempt to get adults in the professional world to take me seriously, I had a brief dress and skirt phase. A friend and I took a trip to the mall. I picked up dresses and skirts and said, I kind of like this one, eager for her to pass homework feminine judgment. Yes, it was cute, or meh, it was OK. Read, it was not OK. Weeks later, I wore a tight skirt into the city for two job interviews in one day, and never felt more grown up than I did as I shook those interviewers' hands. But when I stood in front of a Penn Station bathroom mirror on the way back to Long Island, I didn't feel like the person I saw there was me. Makeup, long, fussed with hair, pencil skirt. I felt like an amalgamation of all the things others said I should be, and worried that a mysterious other me beneath that was getting so lost among others' expectations that I didn't even know who they were or what they looked like. Though I kept the skirt, stowing it away in my closet, I never wore it again. I was two years older the next time I put on a dress, this time for a cousin's wedding in Atlanta. By then, I was out as non-binary and using gender-neutral pronouns among friends and at work. In the weeks leading up to the wedding, I prepped myself for wearing a suit, confident I would be able to put up with stares from family members. But I ended up packing a dress. I wanted to wear a dress, but feared this one act of conforming to the parameters of the gender I was assigned at birth meant I had to revoke my non-binary gender identity license forever. <laughs> Am I allowed to skip wearing heels? I asked my mom as I finished packing. My mom hardly even looked up. Kim, you're allowed to do whatever you want. <laughs>